Good morning, my dear students. In this particular video presentation, we will give introduction about complex numbers <coughs> and we will do some problems if time permits for competitive examinations. Any number of the form x plus i y where x y are real numbers, they are from set of real numbers and i square equal to minus 1, we can very well say i square equal to minus 1, i equal to root of minus 1, both are correct, is known as a com complex number. The need for complex number is like this. If I am going to think about uh, roots of x square equal to 4, I will get x equal to plus or minus 2 or x square minus 4 is 0 and I will get x plus 2 into x minus 2 is equal to 0 implies x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0 or I will get x equal to minus 2 or x equal to 2. Therefore, I will get two roots. Whereas, if I take x square plus 4 equal to 0, I end up with x square equal to minus 4. There is no uh, room for getting uh, uh, roots of such equations. Such equations are called having complex roots. Such roots are called complex or ima uh, imaginary or not real and unreal. Therefore, there was a necessity to introduce another set called set of complex numbers which goes like this. We can even write like this. Capital C is equal to set of all numbers of the form x plus i y where x y are real numbers and i square is equal to minus 1. Instead of saying i equal to root of minus 1, it's better, to, it's more refined to say i square equal to minus 1. This is how introduction, the necessity for a complex number arises. There is no provision to get the solution of equation of the form x square plus 4 equal to 0 or for any quadratic equation where delta is less than 0, there is no provision. Therefore, there was a necessity to introduce another set called set of complex numbers and complex numbers are normally denoted as z, z1, z2, just a notation, okay. When a complex, no, complex number x plus i y is given, x is known as the real part of z, I call it as re of z, y is known as imaginary part of z, not i y, only y. Now for the imaginary part is also a, a real number, is also a real number, okay. And any na <laughs> Real number is also a complex number, okay, which is purely real complex number. Any number x is, can be written as x plus 0, y. Now, for any complex number whose imaginary part is 0, is called a purely real complex number. And any number of the form i, y, or any number having a real part to be 0, is called a purely imaginary complex number. Okay, then if I am given z1 is equal to z2, then z, that is x1 z1 is x1 plus i y1, z2 is equal to x2 plus i y2, this is given, z1 equal to z2, the symbol is called if and only if, if and only if, x1 is equal to x2 and y1 is equal to y2. If the real parts are equal and imaginary parts are equal, those two complex numbers are equal. Similarly, uh, if two complex numbers are equal, the real parts will be equal, imaginary parts will be equal. That's the real meaning of if and only if property, okay, that is the meaning. Then z equal to x plus i y is given. Then z bar is equal to x minus i y is known as the conjugate of the complex number. Z bar is equal to x minus i y is called the conjugate. These are all just definitions. Conjugate of z. Okay. Conjugate of the complex number z. Okay. That is the meaning. Okay. Just listen carefully. These things you are supposed to remember anyway. Okay, this is this is how we get the introduction about complex numbers. Then there is a small representation. Just see here. Or uh, you can even imagine any complex number z equal to x plus i y can be represented as a point x comma y in the coordinate plane. Similarly, for any coordinate uh, point x comma y in the coordinate plane, I'll be able to think about uh, a complex number z equal to x plus i y in the set of complex numbers. Now, for there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of complex numbers and the points in the coordinate plane. I repeat, 
if I take a general point x comma y in the coordinate plane, it will represent complex numbers that equal x plus iy in the set of, set of complex numbers. Similarly, if I take a point uh, z equal x plus iy in the set of complex numbers, if I take a, a, an element z equal x plus iy in the set of complex numbers, I'll be having a point x comma y equivalent to that in the coordinate plane. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of <coughs> set of complex numbers and the points in the coordinate plane. Okay, any point in x axis will be purely real. Any point in y axis will be purely imaginary. Zero is uh, is written as zero plus zero y. Zero plus zero y in general. Take a general point p x comma y. Okay, which represents complex number z equal x plus i y in the coordinate plane. Just draw p p one perpendicular to x axis. It's just a notation. This is called polar form or modulus argument form, modulus amplitude form, either way you can say, let OP make an angle theta with the positive direction of x axis, therefore this length is, this is anyway the x coordinate which is x, this is y coordinate y, then r equal to root of x square plus y square, this is called the modulus of the complex number, remember carefully, this is known as modulus of the complex number, now sin theta here happens to be y by r, for y becomes r sin theta, cos theta becomes x by r, for x becomes r cos theta, for I mean to say automatically z equal to x plus i y can be now written as r into cos theta plus i sin theta. Here r is equal to root of x square plus y square it is known as the modulus of the complex number. Theta given by 0 less than equal theta less than pi is known as the principal value of the argument is known as the argument of the complex number okay argument z okay argument amplitude both are same and i am able to visualize that any complex number z equal x plus away can be brought to the form r into cos theta plus i sin theta this representation is known as polar form of the complex number z equal x plus i y or it is called it is also called modulus amplitude form, modulus argument form, either way you can say. The geometrical meaning of modulus tells you it is the distance between O00 and Px, y, uh, Px y is the point which represents the radical x plus iy in the coordinate plane. And what is the angle made by the segment OP with the positive direction of x-axis is known as the amplitude. I repeat. The geometrical meaning of argument tells you it is the distance between O00 and point Px y in the coordinate plane. Px y represents z equal x plus i in the coordinate plane. The angle made by segment OP with the positive direction of x axis is known as the amplitude. Okay, argument, amplitude both are same. And uh, value of theta of z, 0 less than theta less than pi is known as the principal value of the argument. Is known as the principal value of the argument. Okay, principal value of the argument. Let me just uh, um, principal value zero is equal to theta. Is in one second. Sorry, a small correction. Value such that minus pi less than theta less than to the pi is known as the principal value of the argument. There are many values lying between zero and two pi, satisfying the condition for the argument. Out of which the value such that minus pi less than theta less than equal to pi is known as the principal value of the argument. That is called the principal value of the argument. That is called the principal value of the argument. I repeat, I am able to visualize that we can represent any complex number in the form r into cos theta plus i sin theta. R is known as the Mo modulus uh, the uh, complex number okay and theta uh, such that 0 less than theta less than 2 pi such values we will get normally in general but out of which minus pi theta satisfying minus pi less than theta less than equal to pi is known as the principal value of the argument this is called the argument of theta the geometrical meaning tells you distance between O00 and point P x comma y 
that Px, y represents the complex number with the coordinate plane is known as the modulus of the argument. Whereas uh, angle made by OP, the segment OP with the positive direction of x-axis is known as the argument, is known as the argument. This much anyway you should know before doing the problems. I'll just do one problem, the rest we may discuss in the next video. We'll discuss the rest in the next video. Just see here, if z minus i, z by i, sorry, z by i is equal to 11 minus 13i, find z plus z bar. Just listen carefully. z by i is equal to 11 minus 13i. z is 11i minus 13i square, which implies 11 equal to 11i plus 13 z is 13 plus 11i for z plus z bar becomes 13 plus 11i plus 13 minus 11i this will become 26 let me repeat the whole process z by i is equal to 11 minus 13i given to the given to you i need to find z plus z bar let me try to bring it to the format a plus ib or x plus iy in general cross multiplying i 11i minus 13i square 11i plus 13 13 plus 11i now for z plus z bar, by z bar, I have to change the sign only for the imaginary part. Now for 11i minus 11i will get cancelled. My answer becomes 26. z plus z bar becomes 26. The rest we will discuss anyway in the next video. Thank you students for patient watching.